identify the bones A and B. This is a mid-sagittal section showing part of the nose, palate, mouth, and this is part of the floor of the anterior and middle cranial fossa. So A is the sphenoid bone. You can see here part of the sphenoid air sinus. This is the cella torsica containing the pituitary gland. So A is the body of the sphenoid. And as you can see that it is located in the roof of the nasopharynx. B is a bone by itself, is the inferior concha. List two nerves supplying the mucosa indicated by interrupted line C. This is the mucosa of the heart palate, and it is supplied by the nerve that comes from the pterygopalatine ganglion and opens on the heart palate, as the greater palatine nerve supplies the posterior part of the mucosa of the heart palate. And there's another nerve coming from the nasal septum, passing through the incisive canal. This is the nasopalatine nerve, which supplies the anterior part of the mucous membrane of the heart palate. So the nasopalatine nerve and the greater palatine nerve. The lesser palatine nerves, they supply the mucosa of the soft palate and they pass posteriorly. Which muscle is Elvis using? This is the levator labii superioris aliquinasi. It is one of the muscles of the dilator mechanism of the mouth, a muscle of facial expression supplied by the facial nerve. And as its name indicates, it is an elevator, levator, labii of the upper lip, levator labii superioris, aliquinasi, and it also acts on the nose. It causes accentuation of the nasolabial fold. So it's a lifter of both the upper lip and the wing of the nose. It has a very long name, but the name of the muscle indicates its action. Elvis Presley is famous for this use of this expression, earning the muscle's nickname, the Elvis muscle. Identify the structures A and B. This is a lateral view of an X-ray of the cervical vertebrae. A is the atlas vertebra, and this is the posterior arch of the atlas vertebra. In fact, the atlas vertebra doesn't have a spinous process. What looks like a spinous process is in fact the posterior arch of the atlas. B is the axis, the second cervical vertebra, and this is the spinous process of the axis. Identify the tonsils located at A to D. This is a mid-sagittal section of the head in the region of the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. You can see here the soft palate, that's the nasal septum, so the nasal cavity is not shown but the nasopharynx behind the nasal cavity is shown. Below the soft palate and hard palate is the mouth, and here is the tongue, and behind the tongue here is the epiglottis, and behind it, it leads to the larynx. So here there are a lot of lymphoid nodules that are located within the mucosa, and these act as a barrier against infection at the beginning of the respiratory and digestive passages. Together, they will form a ring of lymphoid tissue, which is called the Waldeyer's ring. At A is the opening of the auditory tube, and therefore the tonsil that is located here is called the tubal tonsil. B is located at the roof of the nasopharynx, and the tonsil here is the pharyngeal tonsil or the adenoid. C is located in the isthmus of the oropharynx, Although the palatoglossal and the palatopharyngeal folds are not shown clearly here, but it's supposed that this is the place of the palatopharyngeal fold, and here's the palatoglossal fold, and in between them is the tonsillar fossa, which contains the tonsil that is officially called the palatine tonsil because of its extension into the soft palate, but is commonly referred to as the tonsil. The other group of lymphoid Nodules are located on the dorsum of the tongue beneath the mucosa, giving the mucosa a cobblestone appearance, mucosa of the posterior third of the tongue, and therefore it's called the lingual tonsil. Identify the cartilages A, B, and C. This is a posterior view of the larynx, and you can see here, this is the posterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage with the superior and inferior horns of the thyroid cartilage. A is the leaf-shaped cartilage of the larynx, the epiglottis, and B, as I mentioned, it is the posterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage with the superior horn here, and this is the inferior horn, which articulates with the cricoid cartilage. 
this is the cricoid cartilage in fact because this is a posterior view then this is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage the wider part of the ring of the thyroid cartilage because the thyroid cartilage is a complete ring and anteriorly it's narrow but posteriorly it is widened as the lamina of the cricoid cartilage identify the fossa d and d and the cavity e fossa d is the pariform fossa or the pariform recess it is part of the laryngopharynx this is the pharynx that is on the side of the larynx because this is the larynx and here's the entrance into the cavity of the larynx so this is the inlet of the larynx and it leads into the vestibule of the larynx so e is the vestibule of the larynx the part of the cavity of the larynx that is located above the vestibular folds d is the pariform fossa and as you can see that it is bounded on one side by the epiglottic fold here it is the lateral glossoepiglottic fold superiorly and on the lateral side it is the lamina of the thyroid cartilage and the thyrohyoid membrane the pariform recess or pariform fossa is one of the places where where pointed and sharp ingested material might get stuck like a fish bone or a chicken bone these bones either get stuck in the valliculi which are located above or anterior to the glossoepiglottic fold or they get stuck into the pariform recess here in d the bones at a and b form roofs of which cavities this is a view of the cranial cavity showing mainly the anterior cranial fossa a is the orbital plate of the frontal bone and it forms the roof for the orbit while b is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and it forms the roof of the nose the multiple foramina that are shown in the cribriform plate and hence the name cribriform means sieve like these multiple foramina are produced by the bundles of nerves that constitute the olfactory nerve from the olfactory area of the nose and they pierce the roof of the nose the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to gain access to the anterior cranial fossa fractures here might result in anosmia loss of sense of smell due to injury of the olfactory nerves and it might also result in the leak of cerebrospinal fluid through the nose a condition which is called csf rhinorrhea in which anatomical structure the calcified material at the base of the frenulum is located this is a view of the floor of the mouth and you can see here the frenulum of the tongue on either side of the frenulum this is the normal side there is a an opening a punctum for the submandibular duct wharton's duct submandibular gland is one of the salivary glands that is commonly affected by a calculus sialolith and here you can see that the calculus is located at the opening of the submandibular gland because they, they open on either side of the frenulum of the tongue as i mentioned that the submandibular salivary gland is a common site of calculus formation and if the stone cannot be seen as in this patient the stone can be palpated in the duct at the floor of the mouth beneath the mucous membrane identify the space a name the part of the nose b this is a mid sagittal section of the head and this is the frontal bone here and the space is the frontal sinus the part of the nose b is the most anterior part of the nose it is the part of the nose that as you can see here contains hairs because it is lined with the skin it's called the vestibule of the nose and these hairs are called vibrissae and this is the part that is as i said it is lined with skin stratified squamous keratinized epithelium most of the remaining part of the nose is lined with respiratory epithelium pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells except the part of the nose that is located at the roof which is lined by olfactory epithelium identify the bones a b c and d which one of them has a synovial articulation this is a lateral view of the skull showing the frontal bone a b is the parietal bone c is the greater wing of the sphenoid here and d is the squamous part of the temporal bone these four bones in fact they 
unite together in a capital H-shaped articulation here. The horizontal bar of the articulation is the region that is called the telion, and this telion marks the location of the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery, which is located on the inside of the skull. Now, which one of them contains a synovial articulation? It is D, the temporal bone, because here the temporal bone articulates with the head of the mandible at the temporomandibular joint. It should be also borne in mind that the temporal bone and within its petrous portion, there are three ossicles, the malleus, incus, and stapes, and these they articulate with each other by two synovial joints. They are located in the middle ear, and their movements will transmit and accentuate the vibrations of the tympanic membrane and transmit them into the oval window. So they are continuously vibrating and mobile. That's why they articulate by synovial joints.